Hey everyone, welcome to my video. It's a repair video on a Yamaha stereo receiver, uh, model CR800. So uh, what we're going to be doing today is replacing the incandescent indicator bulbs that have burned out uh, that light up the uh, the dial and the uh, tuning uh, gauges and everything with LEDs. So this is a Yamaha natural sound receiver. Uh, it was made probably in the mid 70s uh, and you know so now it's about 40 plus years old and it's still going today and these are you know one of the finest receivers probably ever made uh, the stuff they make today is just junk not made to last obviously this is uh, from mid 70s and still going strong and the sound the way it processes the sound is just uh, awesome and you know these receivers when they were first coming over to the United States in the mid 70s were uh, just incredible and they used extremely high components back then it's not like the stuff they make today where they're using very cheap components they don't last long they don't have the kind of natural sound that these things had so these things are just you know beautiful on top of being just amazing uh, functionally so you can see here it has the a walnut, a beautiful walnut case around it. It's got uh, the aluminum face on it. Okay, all these handles and everything are all aluminum. Nothing is plastic on this. Uh, the the uh, tuning knob here is a heavy weighted tuning knob. It's a solid piece of uh, uh, milled, you know, aluminum. So just an amazing. Uh, uh, piece of equipment and also I mean if you think about it this is from 19 you know I don't know 76 or so and look at the design of it I mean even today it still uh, fits it's a modern very modern design so it's sort of a timeless design and I use this uh, for my turntable so I have a matching Yamaha turntable which again if you look at the design of it uh, is like still timeless modern design again it has a walnut base on it uh, this is a belt driven uh, turntable uh, just a gorgeous turntable on, in addition to the receiver and I use it to, obviously to play my records but I use it with my Sonos system so I'm not using it with wired speakers or anything uh, it goes through the Sonos uh, hub here out to all the Sono speakers throughout the house so I can play my uh, vinyl records uh, throughout the house. So the system works perfectly except for the fact that the uh, all the indicator lights on the front panel of the receiver are burned out. So obviously back in the 70s these were incandescent bulbs and they're you know 40 plus years old they're not going to be still alive at this point but um, I did try replacing them a couple years ago with some replacement incandescent bulbs that I got at Radio Shack before it went out of business and because they're not exactly the right amperage they burned out pretty quickly so obviously there's no replacement parts for this from Yamaha so um, I found a site online that sells supposedly these LEDs that are direct replacements with the right amperage that will fix my issue. So we're going to give it a try and see how long they last. Uh, but we have to take it apart and uh, take out the old bulbs and solder in the new ones and then see what happens. So, you know, right now if we turn on the receiver, uh, you can see the lights on here that has power, but none of the indicator lights, like all this area right here where this window is, should be illuminated. Um, so the gauges should be illuminated, the little uh, tuning dial should be illuminated. So none of that's illuminated because they're all burned out. So we're going to try to uh, fix that today and replace these with LEDs. So let's get started. Okay, so here we are. We uh, have our uh, receiver on some nice uh, soft blanket here. So obviously if you got a receiver in really good condition, you don't want to scratch the walnut uh, cabinet. And as you can see here, uh, I have it turned upside down. So this is the bottom. 
And in order to slide the chassis out of the wood cabinet, all you need to do is remove these four screws and these uh, plates here. And then uh, the entire chassis will slide out of the back of the cabinet here. And then we can see the inside and get to work on the actual uh, LED lights that we're going to replace the incandescent. We're going to replace the incandescents with the LED lights. So let's remove these and then we'll pull the chassis out. Okay, so we have the four uh, screws out and their plates. So now we're going to slide the chassis out. And actually, the chassis slides out to the front of the unit, not the back. So from the back, you can just push and it'll start sliding out. And then you can just pull it out from there. And now, here's our chassis. So, if we look inside here, just a little history lesson, I mean, you can look at this enormous uh, power supply here. So here you have a power supply that's been, you know, working for 40 plus years. Um, so the components inside this unit were just, you know, the highest quality available at the time, you know, when they were making this unit. So it's just amazing in here. And actually you can see the, uh, on this side here, you can see the string that is actually the uh, mechanism for the, uh, the tuning knob right here. So if I turn the tuning knob, you can see, you know, what's happening going back and forth, etc. So on the, um, you can see here is where our LED is that we need to replace for the tuning slide. And then in here, there's one, two, three uh, LEDs right there. So these are for the, uh, the gauges. Um, and let's see, that's one, two, three, four. And I think I had a fifth one in the kit that I was sent, so... We'll have to make sure we don't miss any when we're replacing these. Um, to make sure they're all lit up. I think there would be one more somewhere, but I'm not quite sure yet. So we'll have to look at it. But basically what we're going to be doing is uh, re replacing those. Now these here are going to be pretty easy. You just kind of pop these out. You can see I put a little uh, uh, silicone sealer here to hold them in when I replace them the first time. Um, these are nice and easy. We're just going to pop those out. We saw that the leads and we're set to go. This one's a little trickier because you actually have to take off this tuning slide to get in here to do the uh, to do the LED. So that's the trickiest part without damaging anything here and making sure you don't upset any of this uh, tension on these these knobs because you, you can see it's kind of a an interesting setup here. They've got a, a pulley here, right? Here's the tuning slide. You've got this long string. There's a pulley here, and you can see here the string actually wraps around this shaft coming out here, goes down to another pulley, and on the side here there's a huge wheel that this wraps around. I mean, it's quite a complicated design, and what happens is when you turn the tuning uh, dial here, you can see how it all works together. You can see the little string going up and down the shaft as you turn it each direction. Right, and the big wheel turning, and and then of course that's turning the actual tuning uh, plates here, which is what actually tunes into the different stations and frequencies. So, quite a amazing design. And again, after 40 plus years, still working perfectly. So, so we're going to try to repair this so we get this thing back to 100% functional. So. Um, let me get started and we'll start with the easiest ones here on the uh, gauges. Okay, so here's our replacement LED kit. Um, it comes with one, two, three, four big LEDs and then there's one little tiny one. So this tiny one is the one that's going to go on the tuning um, dial. Um, now, I'm not sure if... Um, <clears throat> because I can only find four total on this unit. So I'm not sure if the um, kit is made for, because Yamaha made multiple uh, series of these natural sound receivers. They had different units and you know some of them had more things on them than the other as far as the gauges go and stuff like that. So this kit could be designed for possibly multiple models 
and uh, that's why there's an extra LED. We're going to search around to make sure we don't miss one, but I'm not seeing right now uh, more than four LEDs on the, uh, the display. Okay, so let's start taking out these bulbs here. Now, one thing to keep in, re in mind when you're working on a 40-year-old unit is that as well as these were built, it's still 40 plus years old. And so this thing has been heating up and cooling down for 40 plus years as it's been used. So things inside here be can become brittle. Circuit boards, wiring, uh, plastic housings, and things like that. So you want to be really careful when you're working on the inside here not to disturb anything else, bump anything else, um, because you, you can break something or damage it and then you'd be in a worse situation than when you started. Um, so you just have to, you know, take your time and be very careful when you're working inside something this old so that you don't uh, break something that's, you know, perfectly fine, you know. And just because it's brittle doesn't mean it won't last another 40 years. It just means that if you disturb it, then you're going to cause all kinds of issues. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so what we're going to do here is on these three bulbs that are right here, we're going to use this pick and we're going to just sort of pick out this uh, rubber uh, glue. I think it was just, uh, I think I used just a, um, like caulking, like bathroom caulking, you know, that you'd use in the tub or shower or something like that to uh, hold it in there. So if I go around and just sort of score the outside of it just to break it, I think it'll pop the uh, pop the light out because it's in. This is actually a rubber housing right here, so it's sort of rubber against rubber. And I'm gonna take my needle nose here and then just see if I can twist it out. And there it is. So right there, it came right out. You can see it right here. So it's actually a pretty big incandescent bulb that I put in there. You can see. If you look at it closely, you can see it's actually burned out on the inside there. So it wasn't able to hold the amperage coming off of there. And we're going to replace it with one of these, which is actually a lot shorter in length, and fit it in that same hole right there, and that should resolve our issue. So we're going to do that. Let's let's get the other three out, and then we're going to clean out the um, we're going to clean the um, little sockets out of the goo and then we'll get our new ones ready to go. Okay, so we have all our uh, lights out. You can see here they're all loose now. We've got them out of their rubber uh, holders. And basically, um, all you wanna do is make sure the inside portion where you're gonna slide in the new bulb, it doesn't have any uh, extra glue or anything in it. You don't have to worry about the outside. Nobody's gonna see it. And you don't wanna, again, screw around with these too much here because they're old rubber. So you don't want to accidentally break them or, or rip them or anything like that. Um, so that's all you need to do. So the next portion is just to take the bulbs themselves here, cut the leads, and then solder on the new LEDs and uh, place them into the uh, sockets. Now, you don't want to have the wiring uh, too long because it's going to rest against the circuit board down here which can get hot and one uh, might melt the wiring and then two if it does go through just from rubbing or something like that um, it could also uh, short against the circuit board and then you could ruin other components that you're not going to be able to get replacements for so you want to make sure when you put your new bulb in that you don't leave extra long leads and that the wire here is suspended above the circuit board just like it came from the factory um, you can see on the some portions of it right here and if you can see down here but this has a little sort of tie here from the factory that ties these together and kind of holds them together so after you get these together here you can actually put a little tie obviously you want to make sure it's not interfering with this uh, cord which is used for the tuning slide so obviously you have to make sure all this is clear and nothing's interfering with each other so we're going to cut these off and then solder the new ones on and we're going to make sure the length is correct. So actually what we're going to do first is we're going to take our LED, our new LED bulb here, and we're actually going to 
uh, fit it into the socket here. So we're just going to push it in. And we're going to push it in just a little, it kind of bottoms out when it goes into the, the socket. So you don't have to push very hard, it's just a little bit, but um, it will go a little bit below the lip of the rubber housing. So, and it will just simply bottom out. Obviously you want it in far enough so that you get light going down on the gauge, um, but you don't want to push it too far that you're pushing through the rubber housing, okay? So we're going to actually put those in first, and then we're going to just put a little dab of uh, caulking on it to hold it in. So again, just a rubberized caulking so that in case in the future if we ever need to get it out, it's easy. You don't want to use any kind of like glue, like super glue or anything like that, because then you're going to damage the rubber housings if you ever need to replace them in the future. So I'm going to put those all in first and dry fit them, and then we will cut the leads the right length and solder them on. Okay, so now we have basically stripped our wires here um, and joined it with the new wire for the LED which I have temporarily just set inside the uh, housing. And in addition to that, what we've done is we've also slid on a piece of heat shrink tubing down here on each of the wires. So after we solder it, we're going to slide the heat shrink tubing up over the connection and then heat it up to shrink it and that'll give it a um, insulate it against touching anything on the inside of the uh, unit. Now one other thing to keep in mind when you're doing this is that these wires are run either inside or outside this string right here so make sure after you cut them that you don't accidentally have one wire running underneath the string and one over the string because what will happen is then you'll be trapped and you'll have to cut the wire and resolder it again. So both of these, if you notice, are inside the string here so that I can tuck them down then once I get them soldered um, inside the system. But when I was first attaching this wire here, I didn't notice that this one was actually underneath the string, so it would have been outside here and then that would have been a problem. So just make sure your wires are routed correctly before you solder them. All right, so let's get our pencil iron and we'll solder these wires and then put the heat shrink on. Okay, so we're ready to do our soldering. Now, um, if you notice, I put a paper towel here underneath our uh, splice here that we're going to solder. The reason is, is uh, obviously solder melts, it can drip. And so you don't want solder dripping onto the circuit boards below because that's going to be a problem if you cross two circuits and then you're going to short something out. Um, and also you don't want solder which is also hot to hit the uh, cord here which again is just a uh, you know a nylon cord that could easily melt it and then once you damage that cord you're really in trouble because you know that's not replaceable so um, do yourself a favor just put some kind of protective uh, covering underneath the joint that you're about to solder so that uh, when solder drips onto it, you're not going to have a problem with it damaging something else inside the unit. So we're just going to do a quick solder on this. This will go pretty quickly because it's very thin wire. And we'll just make sure the entire joint is covered. Okay, we'll give that a second to harden. And then now we have a hard and fast joint. And so now we're going to take our heat shrink tubing that we put on the wire earlier. We're going to slide it right over the center of this joint. Make sure it's in the center. And then we're just going to take a little uh, uh, lighter and just run some heat over it until it shrinks around the connection. Okay. All right. 
So now we're just going to repeat the process for the other one. Okay, so one thing I forgot to mention was that uh, a lot of LEDs are polar sensitive, so um, you have to make sure you have the right lead connected to the right one. Now on these LEDs they come with a red and a black um, lead and on the first one that I put in here um, I put in the red to the red, the black to the white, which is typically the way it usually goes. Black is usually the ground, red is the power. Um, and then I did a quick test. I powered the unit on and it didn't light up. So these actually are the opposite uh, on these LEDs. So if I turn the unit on here, you can see that this LED is lighting up right here but this one over here is not. So the leads are reversed and I need to reverse the polarity on those leads. So before you actually solder your leads, do yourself a favor and give it a quick test uh, to make sure they actually um, you have the polarity right and you light it up. So now I'm going to have to take this apart over here and, re and switch these leads around because they're backwards. So that's one thing I should have done before I soldered it and then of course I have to redo it now because of that. So uh, don't forget, a lot of LEDs, you can see it right here, the resistor is actually on this side of the LED, um, which is probably the power side. So because of that, you have to make sure you have the right uh, leads on the right. And so this particular case, the coloring is sort of backwards on these. So don't always trust the coloring, you have to sort of test it out yourself. Okay, so we got all our three uh, new LEDs for our gauges um, all soldered in right here. So we're going to give it a quick test. So we're going to just turn the power on. And one, two, three LEDs are lit. So perfect. So we're good there. So we just have one more left, which is the one that's actually in the tuning slide right here. And this is the difficult one because this has to come apart in order to get to this LED uh, to replace it. So let's uh, get these three mounted in their sockets here and get them the wires tied back and then we'll move on to the next piece okay so before I move on to the tuning slide here um, first of all I've put my bulbs in their sockets now these two slipped right in and they have a nice tight fit because of the rubber housing this one here although um, however slides in and out it's not solid because um, the housing inside here, which is in, in here, is uh, looks like it's melted or had some heat damage from the incandescent bulbs, probably because they were the wrong size that were in there to begin with, so from the replacements that I put in previously. So because of that, uh, this needs to have a little uh, adhesive in here to make sure it doesn't move because it's right next to the pulley here for the tuning cord and we definitely don't want this popping out and then get entangled up inside this cord. Um, so that's not a problem, we'll just put a little glue there. These really don't need it because they they snapped right in, although if this rubber gets hard and brittle over time they may pop out so we'll still put a little uh, uh, caulking in there to, just to hold them in. Um, you notice here I have put some tie straps here to hold these wires. First of all this one, this tie strap holds the wire back I tied it into the gauge wiring so it stays away from the tuning cord. Uh, there's a tie wrap here to keep these all together so they don't let rest on the circuit board. And then two tie wraps here to do the same thing to keep these wires back from the tuning cord. So once we have the little uh, adhesive in here, the caulking, then that will keep these wires away from the pulley here and the tuning cord. And then we'll be set to go. So then we'll move on to the actual tuning slide LED. So let me go get some caulking. We'll just uh, put that in there and then while that's drying we'll go over to the tuning slide. But my main point here is keep your wires nicely bundled. Keep them away from any moving parts so that they don't get tangled in the future because they could just pop out just from moving the unit around and stuff like that if they're not secure. And then uh, the less you have resting on the circuit boards the better because then the wiring uh, as the circuit boards get hot, the wiring, you know, the covering won't melt and then possibly short out the board, etc. So, just a couple of ways to keep it neat and clean on the inside so you don't have any problems in the future. Okay, so you can see I put just a little uh, white caulking there on the uh, LED bulbs housing 
so they can't pop out and that'll dry and it you know you, I no, you notice I make sure it was clear of the uh, tuning cord there however this spot right here is very tight so when you're putting that um, caulking in there I'm just using a little uh, tool little pick to put it in there um, one thing you want to make sure do not get it on this tuning cord because if you get caulking on this tuning cord then it's all over you're not going to be able to get it out because it's it's you know it's a nylon cord with threads it's going to absorb into it and you're going to make that part of the cord stiff it's not going to be flexible anymore so um, what I did is I just took a little piece of painters tape and on the two outside edges of the tape I just taped them together to hold it in place it's not taped onto the cord itself it's just sort of resting on it but that will make sure that when I'm putting in my uh, caulking there or whatever you're going to use to hold it in that you're not going to get it on the cord so just make sure that uh, you protect it Make sure you don't get it on the pulley either uh, as you're doing that. All right, so the next piece we got to do is replace the LED inside the tuning slide. And to do that, we first just take these wires out of the little clip here on the outside. And then we have to take out these two screws so we can get this slide off. Now, these are small screws. Obviously, you don't want them falling in and then falling behind the circuit boards at the bottom there. So um, if you have a magnetic screwdriver it's much better so if you have your screwdriver if, you, if it's not magnetic you can buy one of these tools which is just a dual sided magnet it has a, a hole in the middle of it and also a slot on the outside so to magnetize something you just take your screwdriver and you just run it through in and out a couple times to magnetize a screwdriver if you want to demagnetize it you would run it outside on the edge here so this is magnetized now so if I use it on my screw here and I take it off the screw sticks to the screwdriver so I don't lose it so I can put that aside and then we're going to take the other one off here and just be nice and gentle with it don't like you know go crazy with it so you don't wreck anything and we got our second screw off okay so now we're ready to take our tuning slide off. Now, if I recall correctly, uh, we have to take this bar off here so we can pop this up, um, which is just one, two uh, screws right here. So we're gonna take this off here. Just remove these two screws. Okay, and this bar should come right off. Okay, so now the bar is off, and now we have access to our tuning slide here. Um, and I think we just can move this off a little bit and out of the way. So what we're going to do is, let me get the camera here. I think we're just going to move this slide, if I remember correctly. Um... think how this goes together here. Let's take a quick peek underneath here so I can see it. Oh yeah, the LED is right here, or the bulb is right here. So it just sort of slides into the slot right here. So let me see if I can get a better shot of that. So right underneath this here is where it just sits in this little cavity. So all we have to do is pull that out right there so we're out and then we're gonna replace this with our LED and put it in there and actually the LED is much smaller so it'll fit in there nice nicer so in order to avoid tension on this we're just gonna put it back in place while we uh, take this out here and then solder the new one in so we're gonna do the same process we did before cut it put the heat shrink tubing on it and then get a new LED on there so let's get that done and then we'll put it back in Okay, one thing to note about this that's a little different than the other two, other three that we did here is that the, the length of this is really important because if you notice, it goes back here to this sort of spring-loaded uh, uh, clamp here that keeps this at an exactly certain distance so it can go up and down as it's tuning through and bend. And so 
if you have it too long, it's going to tangle up inside the tuning cord, and if it's too short, it's not going to be able to reach to the different ends of the tuner. So you want to try to keep it the exact same length. So you should try to like keep the uh, cord, cut your new LED down so that the cord is basically the same length as the old one, and you don't want to change that. You don't want to make it longer or shorter. You want it pretty close to where it was originally. So there we have our finished uh, LED solder in place. We're just going to give it a quick test. Lights up, perfect. So again, test all your stuff before you install it back in just in case of issues. Okay, so there's our LED seated in the housing. Now, um, the heat shrink that was on the leads of the LED were act was actually too long because the um, wiring has to actually sort of take a 90 degree turn up to get out of this uh, plate here. So you might have to trim back the um, heat shrink tubing a little bit to get it to fit in if if you're this particular one. If you have a different LED, depending where you get your LED from, uh, it may not be a problem. But because of the resistor that's on the end of this, that's an actual issue. Now luckily this housing right here is a plastic composite, so it, um, even if a little bit of the wire gets exposed, it's not going to do anything, so that's okay. All right, so now we just have to put our plate back on and run our wires through. Now, right now, the way it is, I made a mistake because the wiring is running up above the thing, the um, tuning cord here, and it should actually be below it because it's gonna wanna come out the side and then come into this little hook here to this little um, wire carrier here to hold it. So this needs to actually go under the cord and then into the housing. So let's flip it over and then we'll put it in. Okay, so we have our uh, tuning slide back together. So we mounted our LED, we ran the wires outside this little notch here and it comes around, they take a 90 degree turn and basically there's a little um, um, wire loom right here that you slide this into. Uh, this is, there's an original little clear sleeve that goes over the two wires. That's exactly the right fitness to uh, slide into that loom. If that's missing or it's uh, brittle and fallen off, you can always just squeeze the loom in, the little tab in a little more if you needed to, but that's what it should look like. And out here, you should have basically a curve that goes to this spring-loaded holder right here. So what should happen is, when I turn the tuning knob here, you can see that all the way to the one side, I'm over there, and then all the way to the other side, I'm okay here because the wire is not uh, stretching beyond its point. So it's basically holding where it needs to be on the wire. Well, right here, you can see it's rubbing a little bit against the, uh, the uh, uh, tuning cord. So I think what we're gonna do there is adjust that a little bit so we can either pull this in a little bit or out to make that um, and we can also move this little spring here we can push it over just a little bit on this way now be careful with this of course it's 40 years old also so but we probably don't want it rubbing because it's actually pushing on that tuning cord there so we need to readjust this so do some tests and then make sure everything's working correctly before you uh, put the unit back into its case. So let's let's get that fixed and we'll come back. Okay, so we got it, I think we got it right. So we're at the one end right here. If we turn the tuning knob all the way to the other side, it's not interfering with any of the uh, cords either direction. So we're pretty much set, okay? And then we replaced our bar up here. So we put our uh, our retaining bar at the top here put the two screws back in, and so that one's set to go also. So all we need to do is, uh, I wanna just quickly, there were a couple little pieces of the uh, old caulking here, that um, this old caulking that fell down on the circuit board and everything, so I'm just gonna get a little uh, hose, uh, vacuum hose and suck that out. You do not want to run a brush across these circuit boards with your vacuum. That will create a lot of static electricity and you could uh, damage some of the components. So all I'm gonna do is with a plastic uh, extension nozzle, just go down and suck up the little pieces that fell in. And then we're ready to slide this back into our case and then give it a test. All right, so we're gonna slide the chassis back into the wooden uh, 
case, just all you need to do is pull the power cord through the back and just make sure it doesn't get tangled underneath the chassis itself and you'll be good to go. So you should be able to just slide it right in. It's really heavy, um, so you gotta sort of pick it up, slide it back, uh, just go like partial and then check the back. See where your power cord is, make sure it's out of the way and then just slide the rest of it in and then you can put your uh, four screws back in the bottom so we'll do that and then we'll go put it back where it was plug it in get all the uh, connections made and test it out oh one extra thing as you're putting that in i don't know if you can see it right here but the that little flexible cable that moves up and down with the tuning slide you can see it's right here and there's a clip right here and that clip engages with this tab right here to keep the to line up the chassis to the case so just make sure you don't get that caught inside there because if you get the caught and then you try to push it in you're going to rip it and you'll probably damage it possibly not repairable so just make sure that your little cable is below the clip here and it doesn't get caught so after you get your uh, chassis slid back into the case uh, there is some, you know, play that you have to make sure it's centered in the case. So, you know, just make sure when you're looking at your edges here, the space between the aluminum face and the wooden case is the same on both sides before you tighten down your screws. But what you can do is uh, get it flipped over, put your screws in, snug them up just a little bit. Don't tighten them yet. And then make sure everything's centered and then tighten everything down. And if you do that, then uh, your uh, chassis will be centered in your case. Okay, so here we got everything uh, back to where it was before, hooked up. And uh, we're going to give it a test and see what happens. So here are the um, tuning and signal uh, gauges right here. Um, try to, they should light up when I turn it on. So let's see what happens. Okay, so we got lights now, and we also have lights on the tuning dial right here. So if I go back and forth, you can see the tuning dials lit up. So, 40 years later, we have our lights back on our uh, receiver. So hopefully they'll last another uh, 20, 30 years before the LEDs burn out. So, that's the fix. So if you have a, an old Yamaha receiver and you need to uh, replace the old incandescent bulbs that burned out a long time ago, just uh, if you do a search on eBay, I just search for this particular model and uh, the bulbs and uh, a seller came up that was selling the LED package that goes with these particular receivers. But I'm sure you could do the same thing for any uh, receiver of this vintage uh, and find some uh, LED replacements for it and um, do the basic same steps as I did. So hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.